in the old state, Far East, you know, uh, uh, what do you call that, Fenris? Huh? In Fenris, down by, uh, uh, across from uh, Dural, which is uh, Los Meg, I guess. Or? Los Meg, and uh, the little place called Fenris. Fenris. That was a, a train stop or something, I guess. Yeah, it was a train stop. Uh, one uh, day, my father came from the field. Papa came and he said, Lord, Lord, I want all of y'all in the potato house. There, there's a storm coming up. And so we all got gathered and there were not any potatoes because this was in the summer. It was a storm, dark clouds and everything. And uh, we went in the potato house and um, I could hear the dish pan fall from our home on the screen porch and I, I made a crack in the door at the potato house. He said, please, Myrtle, please don't open that thing. The lightning will kill us in here too. And he was very, very much afraid. He was so afraid of storms. And the only one, two of the kids inherited that. Dylan was terribly afraid of in his little afternoon summer storm. He'd come in my old house where I was living and he would be so nervous he'd go to every door, make a crack and pee outside. <laughs> that is a true fact. We would sit and, 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 and we were quiet. I, he'd come when I was by myself and he said, I was going to come buy some groceries, but I saw the lightning. I came here because I'm afraid. And he, who was the other that was? Huh? You said there was another another one in the family that was also? Uh, 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 Mabel. Ma Mabel. Mabel inherited that. I'll be darned. I never knew that. Joel would go fishing with J.C. Uh, Keller. And uh, she'd say, Raleigh, you and Myrtle, please come sleep at the house. Not only was she afraid of a, maybe a, 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 a rainstorm would come up in the summer, but she was afraid uh, of, of sleeping by herself. So we'd go one time and said, y'all hurry up and get here because it's lightning and thundering. Well, we got there and, we, and it was a little late. So Raleigh and I went to bed and she'd walk from the one room to the other, and she'd say, how can y'all sleep I said, uh, in this horrible storm? I said, Mabel, shut up, go to your room, and, and this makes me sleepy. Raleigh has to go to work tomorrow. If you don't stop worrying us, we're going to get up and go home. So, God, that shut so, her up. Arrête ton train. Arrête ton sac à quoi. <laughs> Like, like Papa, he would have said well, about the potato house, he would have said something in French, like. Mar, fans the pot, the tonabe on the But this was a bad one because uh, Dovic Rougeau oui. had a store and it, it, it had scattered some of his merchandise from, from his store. I'll be darned. Ma, a mile away. It was a bad, it was like a semi hurricane. I see. Well, it gave them reason, I guess, to get... They were a young age when all this happened, I guess. Well, all, you, all of you were... Well, yeah, I, I was barefooted in that potato house. I said, L listen to the dish pan on the, on, on the screen porch. Milo, will you please shut up and close that? Yeah, that, uh, Dillard, Papa would worry Dillard, come in the field and help me. Well, he'd go in the field and he'd bring Papa some water, you know and everything, and uh, when Papa, uh, Papa used something, Dillard was gone. He had brought him a bottle of water. He'd say, Dillard, I want you to help me. And Dillard would walk as fast as he could because he didn't want to take the, the, uh, the charu and, and plow. Oy. He had shoes on and everything. He'd say, oh, Papa, you can finish by yourself. But he'd make a, Dillard, come here and relieve me, I'm tired. And Dillard would make out like he never heard him. Really? He'd say, you know you're hard of hearing when you go back in the house. <laughs>
Was, was he, he and Uncle, uh, Uncle Dewey about the same age? Or Dewey was off to school at that time? Was, was yeah. He, and uh, Dewey would come by Mr. Mayu's manual uh, house, and that's where the train would let him down. I see. Would, I, was he finished with school at that point? No, no, he was still in New Orleans, you know, either practicing, you know, he's going to Tulane, he was either finished or still going to college, I don't remember. Was he in the Navy for a while after? Yeah, he was in the Navy, uh, 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 and they even sent him to Harvard, and I'm so proud to, ba to brag that my brother went to Harvard. He went for a course that would help him in the Navy, he and other recruits. I see. I understand he was a, a French interpreter, too, at one point. Or, yeah. Uh, and he went to Harvard maybe for three or four weeks, and I'd say, oh, my brother's in Har at Harvard. Uh, and when he wasn't at Harvard, he was at Tulane. They said he must be very smart. And er er every Sunday, my father would uh, uh, hitch the wagon and we'd go to Mr. Mayus, Manuel, and uh, they'd tell me, look, you're not going to ask uh, any, for any water or anything to eat. We're going to just go and visit in the afternoon. So they would say, I'm glad, glad if you all leave because I want to study. He was a very studious I'll be person. Yeah. And I, it was during his college days. You know. I see. So that's long before he was married. Oh, yeah. It was long before he was married. I see. And he would uh, a lot, uh, close a, door, a room. We had a big house. You know, we were seven or eight in the house. And he'd close the door and nobody would go there because he was studying. I see. So it was uh, Grandpa's name was Uday and his wife was Alice Aguilar. Uh, I, I, I or, uh, Alice Aguilar. Yeah, and, uh, and she they married when she was uh, just thirteen. Is that thirteen? And she had thirteen kids, <sighs> but they didn't all survive. You, you don't remember the names of all the children, no? I guess. No, one of them was Maud, and another one. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't, but about seven years old. Yeah, you were the, the youngest or second the youngest. I, I wish there would have been some Viagra in my <laughs> father's time, because he couldn't uh, 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 keep seven, you know, eight children. Right. One of them was Maud. She uh, died too. You know, they would die. They would not survive or live long. As, as they would today. Probably. The doctors were not as so uh, progressive and things like that. But we'd go meet Dewey uh, at Balmeus Manual, and he, the train would stop, and he'd uh -huh. let him down with his luggage. Oh. And uh, on Sunday, you know, we'd walk, and I'd walk, and I didn't have any shoes. And I, I would make some dust, and that would aggravate Doc. You, you know, he didn't want. He was neat and clean. He say, Myrtle, for goodness sakes, if you don't stop stirring the dust with your feet, I'm gonna strap you right here at the road." So I'd listen to him because we were so happy to see him. Yeah, I see. And uh, Uncle Hubert, did he ever make it down, or was he in New Orleans at the same time? I don't remember Hubert in the picture at all, you know. And John wasn't born. Wasn't yet. born yet. No. But uh, Uncle Hubert eventually ended up in New Orleans, in he was, marrying Aunt Golda. Yeah, he he married Go, uh, Goldie, and had one offspring, Hubert Jr. Exactly. But I was just wondering, as a as a child, I guess he was much older than you as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Hubert uh, and uh, and and uh, Dillard. Well, I guess Dillard married uh, uh, Gladys. I remember their wedding. You know. I see. Dillard had a suit and a tie. He looked like he a. Was, you know. He was out of his element there. <laughs> oh boy, I guarantee you. I know. Uh, that's all I can think of. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering. I, I thought. Uh, I thought uh, Uncle Hubert might have worked with Papa on the farm for a while before leaving for New Orleans. Or oh, Hubert would uh, hated that. He 
He went to New Orleans and he got a job uh, at a Chevrolet garage. I remember that. Yeah. He was a uh, repair. Right. Uh, radiators. I see. I'll be darned. And I'd go see him sometime. I'd take the train and go. That was an event to. to oh, that was like going to uh, Europe. Exactly. I'll be, I remember as a child going to, to New Orleans to spend a few days. No, yeah. But, but I, I, I think a lot different then as well. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I was just, that was one of the, I didn't hear too much about Uncle Hubert. And I was just wondering, you know, things about him as well as. My father was rather well off for a man that time. He was a, he was sort of a lawman, a constable. I see. Yeah. Just stop. And uh, land was cheap. He'd say, "Well, I have eight children living," and uh, at that time he had eight children. You know, some of them may have died in infancy and everything. But I'm gonna leave. A, that's my aim in life, is to leave a farm to each child. And as soon as we inherit that, that farm, we'd sell it and uh, uh, invest money in something else. I see. I'll be darned. After, uh, after my father was deceased. I see. And he had poor papa. He didn't have much patience. He'd sleep every day at noon, you know, he'd unhitch the horse, Blackwood, he had a horse named Black, and Black would aggravate him, he didn't want to be hitched to go back to the field, Papa would beat him and everything else. I was always afraid he'd kill my, my father. The horse would, yeah. Black, God damn, he'd curse and everything, <laughs> but when he would sleep, like from Dinner time till about one or two. The days were long in the summer. We did not make any noise either. We'd go play under the china ball tree. But the bark, did, the dog didn't bark. We didn't holler at one another. And, and uh, we'd play games, but we'd always quite, quite, quite because he'd have come out there and, and whip us. Now, you know I work hard. And when we moved to, to Eunice, he had some land, and he planted, my father bought some land, and he planted some cotton. And as soon as we'd come back from school, he'd say, y'all get your clothes off and let, get a sack and go pick cotton. And uh, he would get angry at Dean, he said, Alice, will you please tell Dean to come in the cotton field too? I hear him whistling, whistling in the house. He, I, I want to soon have a bale of cotton, a bale of cotton plus an, an, an acre. That was a big, big thing. So everyone chipped in together and, and did worked in the field or whatever. Yeah, we picked the cotton after school. I see. And the cotton was way tall. Don't bend the plants. They're going to bear till the winter. <laughs> Produce as much as you could off of each That's plant. right. I'll be there. had eight mouths to feed. <laughs> but Dewey, Dewey was sent to school by a, a, a lawyer from uh, a Crowley. I see. I didn't know. He didn't have money to go to Tulane. But Mr. Carbouche was a lawyer and he had a big long picture of about so many of his uh, uh, young men he sent to college I'll to be, be doctors. I'll be darned. Uh, or lawyers. So he took that upon himself just as a... He took it upon himself. If I remember well, Mr. Carl Mooch was a, a very active lawyer. I don't remember if he had any children of his own. I see. But any student who wanted could go talk to him and he'd put him through college. He had a, a pool with the Tulane University College. I see. As long as they would maintain their grades. As or, long as they maintained their grades and they would just study. I see. So each each one in your family had a good opportunity as well. As, yeah. Uh, in, other, in other areas, if you wanted to go to school. But you take like Dylan, he'd say, you want to go to college? The road is open, you go. 
Dillard was he didn't, a that didn't, Yeah, he didn't interest. That didn't interest him at all. No. He didn't like him speak. He didn't like to speak English much. No, he didn't want to learn to speak English. Uh, uh, but the way he do it, my father was a shame. My father would call him, and he was in the field. He'd run back to the house. He didn't want to stop by. Oh, I see. That An was, excuse to get away from work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deem, I don't remember Deems uh, 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 getting married. I know that my father had to pay him to stay in school a few dollars a week. To pay him to stay in school? Yeah, he'd pay him. He'd say, Dean, if you study and pass, I want you to have an education. Well, I'll be done. And he'd uh, allow him maybe five, ten dollars. So my brother Dean would go and he'd make the grades. I'll be done. But he chose to be a carpenter in the end yeah. and not go to school. I don't know why, but he went to Thornwell and stayed a year with my... With the Aguilars. Yeah, with my uncle, uh, Balsack. Balsack. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's Wendell's dad. Yeah. Uh, but that was, that was back, uh, I guess Aunt Mabel was, was she, was she in school as well? Yeah, Mabel went, uh, and Lillian, they went, uh, I believe Mabel might have gone to the seventh grade. Oh, really? They didn't go high in the, in the thing. There were so many other things to do, I guess, that, that didn't require school as it would today. It, it wasn't very, uh, yeah, young women didn't have to go to school. They oh. just wait until somebody marries them. Exactly. And uh, y'all were pretty... Uh, I mean, you, you were bilingual, so that was, if you did need to do something in school, I mean, at, uh, at, in town or whatever, that was a, a benefit, I guess, to some degree. Yeah. But at school, even when I was gone, if they'd hear us talk French, yeah. that was a, a, a good whipping. Good whipping. Can you imagine? They did, never mind child abuse. But uh, when Dean and I would meet on the school ground, we would fit rat, fit rat in French. Oh, well, sure. I'm sure a lot of them did on, on the side because yeah. it was a natural thing to do. When we moved to Eunice, we were about, uh, we stayed in town. I don't know why. And then my father found out, the, uh, just out of town, about a mile, he bought some 10 acres of land. Oh, is that right? Towards Mamu, north of here? Well, here, where oh, oh, your oh, daddy wait. and mother live. Oh, okay. I he, see. He bought that land. I see. And he'd sell it back to Dean very cheap. I see. So he could be uh, he and Ruby Dare could get married and settle there. Yeah, I see. And Aunt Lillian was uh, at this time she was married as well. She lived out yeah near Tasso near. Yeah, I know. Mabel and Joel were going together, but my mother had to sit like a chaperone, they would, uh, uh, she would sit on the porch and they would sit in the living room. Well. <laughs> the Lord, uh, uh, she, they didn't dare leave them alone. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that? Well, I copy these movies for the benefit of my nieces and nephews. The purpose being, of course, that you can reminisce and see how people and places looked 20 odd years ago. Of course, there is some loss of color, sharpness, and detail in the copying process. I hope to round robin this tape with those having VCRs. At a later date, I will attempt duplicates on an additional VCR and should this prove satisfactory, I will make duplicates available to those interested in one as a keepsake. I also have a family album of still photos beginning with my great-grandmother on my father's side, my grandparents, uncles, 
and various members of the Biodo family. If duplicating is acceptable, I will make this available to those interested also. Now this is the end of this, uh, and I'll sign off now. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Thank you. Bonsoir. Charles and Philippe.